All right, welcome everyone. Pretty cool to be here. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit of, I don't know, deja vu is maybe the right word. I'm not sure what's going on, but, uh, and I see my boomerang isn't there, but that's cool. I'll talk through that. So I'm Joe Spizak. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I used to run the earliest conferences for PyTorch and, um, you know, was involved in, uh, been involved with PyTorch a long time, so it's really cool to be here. Um, so just a little bit about me. So I'm in Meta, um, two squares equals, should, should equal boomerang. Um, so I boomeranged uh, back just a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, I'm leading Gen AI open source, uh, including Llama. I have a talk in the afternoon if you want to hear more about Llama. I'm also a co-founder of this uh, PyTorch Foundation uh, with Sumith and, and so many other contributors. Um, I also do a bunch of work in, in the VC land. Um, you can see some of the names in Lightning and Anthropic and others where I've angel invested. And then previously, obviously, worked on PyTorch, but also worked in uh, areas like AI guided material discovery, protein folding, uh, formal mathematics. Uh, the cool thing about a lot of that work is actually it's turned into companies, which is kind of cool. Uh, so if you want to chat about that, happy to. Uh, I wanted to give a little bit of a history lesson uh, today, and I have actually two parts uh, to this. So there's the morning, and I'll talk more about kind of the major uh, moments that, that have kind of taken us to where we are today. Uh, starting with the numbers, um, the afternoon, it's all about the ecosystem. So starting with the numbers, I love to look at these like Google Trends, because it kind of gives you an idea of like where, where things are in kind of the state of consciousness. And you can see I just compared like PyTorch and Generative AI, and you can see, I don't know who hasn't been paying attention in the last 10 months, but Gen AI obviously has been hockey sticking. But the cool thing is PyTorch has been steadily you know, there from 2016 and actually even eclipsed, I think, the level of awareness that Gen AI has today. And then if you look at some of the, these stats, I kind of dug some of these up in, in, from our internal uh, dashboards and just some public data. Uh, you can see, and I don't want to steal Aubon's thunder too much here, uh, but you can see that you know, PyTorch has 20% year over year uh, enabled over 600,000 projects. Uh, you can see the upward trend, kind of this, if you did a trend line, monotonic in, in, uh, increasing for archive papers, so PyTorch has clearly become the, the foundation of research. Uh, contributors, I think going back to, I grabbed numbers going back to 2018, you can see it's something like more than 4X, probably almost uh, over 4X, um, you know, since, since we released PyTorch 1.0, so almost 3,000 uh, contributors to the project. And then you can see the downloads, which is uh, a very noisy figure, but, you know, nearly uh, 276 million downloads uh, since just 2021 in the beginning. So uh, the project is alive, it's well, uh, the community is vibrant, um, and it really is the foundation of a lot. So, you know, in those early days, um, you know, where obviously Sumith was considering to move to Python, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, that was interesting, but I wanted to actually take a step back because I think um, there's always a question around why you invest in open source. I never questioned it personally because I think open source is amazing, but obviously we need to make money and, you know, companies need to do these things for reasons. So why did we invest? Um, so I think um, some of these are pretty intuitive and some of them are not. I think if you look at the, at the time um, when PyTorch, and we were putting out PyTorch, PyTorch 1.0, there was this crazy community, this, this high entropy area of like computer vision, NLP, um, and basically we saw just this, a lot of uh, basically innovation happening and having this kind of bridge to it and being able to, to bridge to that entropy I think was, was super valuable for us. So having the cutting edge work, having for example like PyTorch Lightning and all these computer vision libraries and Hugging Face and all these other folks build on top of PyTorch actually brought a lot of benefit. Second, um, a lot of those building blocks actually were usable internally, whether it was for research, uh, we use, for example, again, Lightning for, for training a lot of models, uh, Cornea, which is a computer vision library we started using internally. So it gave us basically a lot of things that we could then leverage in, in our internal stack. It also brought hardware optionality. And this was really nice because we had hardware vendors and we were working obviously as a company, working with different hardware vendors like AMD and NVIDIA and Intel and others. Um, and having them kind of invest and work with us collaboratively obviously gave us optionality as a company, but also as a community. And if you remember, uh, you know, just five or six years ago, the infrastructure space, the, the ML infrastructure space was, was just super chaotic. And it, honestly, it still is pretty chaotic. Um, but this actually allowed us to, I think, de-risk a lot of, of what we saw. We could actually, we, we looked at what was happening in MLOps, uh, what was happening in you know, libraries and, and training and inference, um, and this, this actually allowed us to, to, again, just leverage and understand where things were going and really de-risk ourselves. 
And of course, we love to, you know, uh, we love to, to draw people in. We love to, to bring engineers and PMs into Meta. Um, it, it definitely kept me there, and it actually brought me back there. And then lastly, of course, uh, I brought a lot of thought leadership and positive brand perception uh, for the company, but it also, I think, raised awareness of, of a lot of others, which I think is, uh, you know, we'll talk about that in the afternoon in, in the ecosystem. So a, a bit of an abridged history, um, and we'll have a little bit of a video uh, that I'll, I'll show you kind of at the end of these slides. So actually, who's read the licensed, licensed TXT out of curiosity? Okay, a few hands. It is super interesting to read. It goes back a really long way. As you can see from, you know, just a snapshot here, it actually goes all the way back to 2001 with, you know, Sammy and Ronan and, and Johnny and carries all the way through to present day. Uh, it's a little bit of a history lesson. So I, I honestly just love like looking through it and seeing like who's all been involved. And, you know, you can see some of the names like Sammy's at Apple, uh, Corey and, and uh, Clement are at DeepMind and Google. Um, obviously Sumith is, is, is here with us at Meta, and Adam, of course, is at Google. So you can kind of see this like really interesting history of, of all these really like brilliant people uh, that have contributed to it over time, uh, including the original Lua Torch. So you know, starting back, and I didn't go all the way back to the Lua Torch. Uh, I'd have to make a much longer timeline here, uh, but just you know, starting with I think the, the first commit that I found. So I actually did some archaeology in GitHub. Uh, it's actually pretty difficult to find the first commit for PyTorch because it was based on, of course, Lua Torch. So I, I did uh, a lot of trial and error looking through commits and finally found you know, the first, first commit from Sumit back in June uh, 2016. I think actually it was at the workshop in ICML that year, if I recall. Maybe that was the year before uh, when we were talking about uh, Python. So that kind of gives you an idea when the first actual like PyTorch was sort of born. Um, and actually I looked even back further and I saw like commits and stuff from uh, Yanqing when he was at Google. It's a really interesting story if you actually go through the, the commit history. Um, in 2017, this was kind of when things got really interesting. Uh, you know, Andre in, in his famous uh, tweet about, you know, uh, using PyTorch and having more energy and having clearer skin. That kind of was, a, was a, just a fun tweet that we like to point to. But just also like people taking bets on us, uh, like Jeremy uh, and, and Rachel at Fast AI, or you know Clem and Julian at Hugging Face, and 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 Sylvan and folks, uh, just you know take, taking a bet on building on PyTorch. At the time, it was a big deal. We looked at it and we're like, oh my god, like Fast AI is going to build on us as a sole you know library, and you know uh, we better not screw this up, right? Um, so, so that was a big deal for us. Obviously, in, in early 2018. Uh, you can see our, our very, very little person there, Shrep, that's our former CTO uh, from Meta, getting up on stage at, uh, at F8 and announcing PyTorch 1.0. I'm not going to lie, it was completely vaporware at the time. Uh, but we finally delivered a 1.0 later that year, which, which was not vaporware, which is really cool. And you can see uh, it actually has, you know, really elements of, of PyTorch, uh, Onyx, as well as the original Cafe 2 uh, incorporated. And then we kind of enter this this crazy hyper growth phase uh, where you can see like, you know, TPU, so we announced TPU support with Google, uh, OpenAI standard, uh, standardized on uh, PyTorch, preferred networks, uh, Tesla, um, you know, so we all of a sudden got super nervous because basically every autonomous vehicle company was building on PyTorch. And, <laughs> and so we're like, oh my God, um, you know, you got TRI and you have Tesla and you have, you know, Lyft level five and, and Uber and all these companies basically, you know, their foundation being something that we, you know, were kind of leading and building, and, uh, and it was exhilarating at the same time. And then, of course, Gen AI came, and you know, we had been working with you know Tom and the folks at OpenAI for such a long time, and that kind of culminated in GPT-3, uh, and eventually GPT-4, um, and of course ChatGPT, and, and of course uh, Stable Diffusion being built on uh, PyTorch and actually PyTorch Lightning as well. And so that kind of started, you know, that that Gen AI revolution. And then PyTorch 2 came. Uh, it was all about you know, compiler and, and supporting other hardwares and, and really taking things to the next level. And then where we are today, which is the PyTorch Foundation. And obviously, Ibrahim gave some, some numbers. And uh, this was something that you know, Sumith and I talked about for such a long time in building this foundation and taking this to, to be a true community with, with true open governance. Um, and I'm basically, I'm very excited about where it is today. So I want to uh, show you all at least a teaser of a docu-series or documentary, I should say, um, that 
kind of brings together some of the various voices from the community uh, with uh, obviously a longer uh, documentary coming. Obviously, we're in the middle of uh, an explosion in the whole AI space. All the fancy AI innovations that you hear about, OpenAI models, GPT, at the back of it, uh, PyTorch is driving it. The revolution happened when a lot of people started to think about the same types of ideas. In 2013, Facebook started a fundamental AI research lab. The software ecosystem was fragmented, incredibly fragmented. Someone needs to go build a new tool. PyTorch came in a very interesting angle, in the sense that it doesn't really fight for the fastest performance, but fights for the easiest user experiences. Make the researchers productive. That's the only goal. The excitement from the community was through the roof. PyTorch came out, and then I was like, oh, this makes a lot more sense. I could read it in like seven lines of code. I could see what we were doing in 50 other lines of code. Pretty quickly after that, it moved from this was something interesting to this is now our preferred machine learning framework. The pace at which the innovation spread throughout the human system, it blew my mind. We started to see libraries explode on top of PyTorch. Then the paper came out and GPU-3 came out and the world changed at that point. Very exciting. I'm still... <laughs> I think I'm actually wearing the same hoodie in that video too. It's crazy. All right, so there is a part two of this uh, talk in the afternoon, so look forward to that.